So when we think about sustainability, before we start thinking of it in the context of our business or the world, what does it mean? And in the simplest form, it means to exist constantly. It means to exist constantly. There are many definitions and some of them go over a number of pages. This is one of my favourites, which is, sustainability means we shouldn't be using up everything today that pe will also be needed by people tomorrow. It's as simple as that. So how does it show up in business models or in discussion? Usually in three pillars, the three Ps, you might have heard of them. The first one is people. And that's everything from uh, making sure people get paid properly, making sure that you're not hiring uh, green-eyed blonde women who are 50 from North Sydney for all of your jobs. That's me, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Um, and making sure they're working in a safe environment and basically following the letter of the law. Not all of our chefs in Australia do that. The other part, of course, is the planet. And that's to do with our raw materials, it's to do with our energy usage, and it's to do with managing our resources in a way that we won't use up everything today that the people of tomorrow will also need. The third pillar is profit. Because profit brings you the ability to reinvest in these things, but also, if you're not profitable, then guess what? You're not existing constantly. So it's as important as the other two pillars of sustainability. So sustainability, probably five years ago, certainly 10 years ago, we weren't having special forums about sustainability. We weren't reading things on websites about sustainability. Why is it so big now? And the reason why is, a, is actually another presentation, but I'm going to start mine in 2017. So, Thinking about Australia, it was just about two years ago, it was a very significant event, and that was our plebiscite about marriage equality. And you're thinking, yeah, okay, what's this got to do with sustainability? It's actually got a lot to do with sustainability. It was a tipping point for Australia in terms of social values. Australians decided they wanted to fight for fairness. And they were tired of waiting for their leaders and for the government to do everything. So they campaigned and they lobbied and there was civil disobedience, which continues to this day, for people to fight for fairness. So we went to the plebiscite. Australia decided yes to marriage equality. Quite a tipping point. What else happened in a fight for fairness? We had something called the Royal Commission into Banking and Finance. And this revealed a very nasty and ugly truth about some of the operating practices of our biggest financial institutions that was quite frankly rather frightening. And one of the biggest casualties of this whole Hain Royal Commission was the lack of trust. As we saw this morning, if you saw Howard's presentation, bankers are amongst the least trusted in our community. Sorry, Denovan, who's speaking later. I'm sure you're a top bloke. What else have we been hearing in terms of fighting for fairness? Who's this young lady? Greta Thunberg, who said, our house is on fire, I want you to panic. <laughs> you can't get m much more of a straighter message than that. And her influence has caused people, children, of, and people of all ages around the world to go out and say, we want to fight for fairness about climate change. We don't believe our political leaders are doing enough. The other driver of sustainability and the fight for fairness, trust, transparency, is the consumer. This is a statue of Freddie Mercury in Switzerland. He wants it all and he wants it now just like the consumers. They want to understand everything about your business. They want to stand the, understand the ethics of your business. They want to know what you stand for. Taking a stand is the new part of a brand. People want to know, what's your position on climate change? What's your position on clearing the Amazon rainforest? And we know 
that when we talk about sustainability, when we practice sustainability, it's good for business. So here are some figures from 2017 from Nielsen in the United States. And we can see that products that have claims around sustainable farming practices, about ethical business practices, actually command a premium. And this is a study from 2017 from Nielsen again. 73% of millennials are willing to spend more money on this one thing and it's not even avocado toast. What do you think it is? Wild guess. Things that are, starts with S, really long word, Susta sustainable. Yep, is this on? It's on, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so sustainability is actually a lot like justice. Why do I think it's like justice? Justice not just has to be done, it has to be seen to be done. And sustainability has a lot in common with that. For example, London Stock Exchange, maybe you've heard of it, earlier this year decided to recategorise shares. And they said, well, oil, gas and coal, actually, we're not going to call it that anymore. That's going to be classed as non-renewable energy. And all this stuff that was called alternative energy, uh, no, we're going to start calling that renewable energy. And I was informed not two hours ago that the London Stock Exchange has actually said to some of its entities that it lists, if you're not demonstrating sustainability, we're going to delist you. You don't qualify. Closer to home, Woolworths, you're going onto their website, you'll see this is their angle. People, planet and prosperity, and thanks to you, they're growing greener every day. And Woolworths are doing even more than that. They're participating in something called the Business Benchmark for Farming Animal Welfare. And this is a very interesting piece of benchmarking. It's done with about 150 food companies around the world. There's 35 subjective criteria and six tiers that you can fall into. And as you can see, since it started in 2012, the number of participants have increased, but so have the number of organisations in tier one. How many Australian companies do you think are participating in this study? If you had to guess a number between one and 150. Close? Two. Nailed it. Okay. And who are they? Well, they're Woolworths and Coles. And they're both in this second group here. And uh, Woolworths have been very clear. Their objective is to get to tier one. Guess how many Chinese companies are involved in this, Chinese food companies? Random number between one and 150. Colin, give me a number. Legs 11, there are 11 involved, so more than Australia, and they understand the business advantage. Now, the Australian Beef Sustainability Framework is uh, another part of proof. So justice, remember, it can't just be done, it's got to be seen to be done. So we have things like benchmarking and we have things like the Australian Beef Sustainability Framework, which Jenny's going to talk about. Um, McDonald's are quite serious about sustainability. They're so serious about it in Australia, they've lent their supply chain to test proof of concept for the Australian beef sustainability framework. What about the banking world? Well, you might have heard of something called UNEP Finance Initiative, or maybe not. So that was established in 1992 after the Rio Earth Summit. And uh, these people came together and they said, you know, we really have to make sure that private sector finance gets channelled into sustainable development. So in July of this year, 130 banks around the world from 49 countries with a combined asset of 47 trillion decided to launch their principles for responsible banking. And their number one is alignment, alignment with social values. And they all report on this, they all prove on this every single year. So to sum up, I would say, sustainability is a global mega trend that is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. A sustainability promise needs sustainability proof. Never forget that. 
and businesses that behave sustainably will win in their sector. I don't mean describe sustainability or talk sustainability, I mean behave sustainably. All right, let's introduce our first speaker.